So the second example of air gap, it's a, um, so I don't need to introduce any more new rules. You can continue to apply this rule, just to pay attention to the situation you are looking at. So an um, air gap between two uh, gl uh, glass plates, it might be like this. You have the bottom glass, and you have the top glass, so they are both glass. And maybe they are being kept separated by, I don't know, speck of dirt or something that's keeping one end higher. So you are looking at some light coming in. So you know the top glass, you know, it would actually have some thickness. It's not doesn't have to be infinitely thick. So here you have multiple reflections going on, but you could say I'm I think I can ignore all the other surfaces. The only two surfaces I'm paying attention to are these two surfaces that have air between them. And the beam path that I'm looking for looks like this. Beam comes in, reflects from here, and beam continues to go through and reflects from here. And I'm looking at how these two beams are um, interfering with each other. Okay? And um, so we won't go through the detailed calculation. But this is what you will pay attention to as you are analyzing this. Uh, index of refraction of glass, it's, I guess, 1.5. But what's important is that it's greater than 1, index of refraction in air. And the same thing here, index of refraction um, um, in this glass is greater than 1. So as you look at it, you go through the same considerations that you do before here. So you look at the point where beam one is reflecting. You look at the thickness that the beam two is going through, some kind of thickness. So you'll have to double it. It's air, index of refraction one, so you don't have to change the wavelength here. And you would look at the reflection here. Okay? Now, on this top reflection here for beam one, is there any phase shift? No, right? It's going from greater to smaller index of refraction. OK, so beam one, it gets a phase shift, oops, um, phase shift of zero. Uh, so beam two, it would get phase shift due to the additional length. So that would be 2 pi, now I'm remembering it, lambda over n. Oops, not lambda over n. The distance, 2t over lambda, right? Now, but watch it out for beam two. On this reflection, is there a phase shift? Yeah, it's going from um, smaller to larger index of refraction. So there's going to be a phase shift here. So plus pi. So it turns out, um, let me tell you a little bit of a secret. If you ever get these two rules mixed up, you will never know it by the answers you get because the answer will come out to be the same. What you have to remember is that the rules are the opposite for these two cases. <laughs> I mean, this is the correct rule, but it, if you get them mixed up, turns out it's not as important as um, you know, forgetting them altogether. Okay? So you, know, you have these two phases, you get the phase difference, and you would go through the rest of the calculation that way. Um, and this is the demo you saw with this glass plate that was handed out. Your textbook actually has a picture of that. Um, there. Uh, yeah, picture of that. When you have two glass plates that are placed very close together, then you get that kind of um, um, you get that kind of interference pattern. It's essentially showing a thickness a thickness that's varying on the order of tens of nanometers from the number that, uh, number that you saw calculated before. Because you vary the wavelength by 50 nanometers, it'll change which wavelength is getting uh, destructively interfering and constructively interfering. 